is up $20,000 on this one position. I want to be up $20,000 and I'm just going to keep adding because I want to be like Glenn. And that's where that greed takes over. So, you know, people, the golf course indicator, they're really playing off of fear and greed at the same time without them even realizing it. What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. It is the 12th. 12 days done in the year 2022, January 12th. Um, we kind of shifted this week or this month of our trading calls. You know, it's not trading topic Tuesdays, unfortunately. We will probably eventually get back to that, but um, life happens. So we're doing it on Wednesdays, all right? Seven, same time, 7 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Come on and join the conversation. And tonight's topic, tonight's topic, where it's going to be great. You know, we, we throw on these calls where we discuss everything, anything trading, um, everything on the charts. We go through everything, even in our minds, right? Mindset, the way we make decisions on trading, how we trade, what we see, what we do. And they all play a key role in our trading journey and how we whether we'll we're gonna be profitable and successful or lose tons of money blow our accounts we've all been there go full margin all right full send one time just throw them <laughs> but tonight's topic we're gonna be covering fear and greed right in trading and yes you maybe you've heard a little bit about it but yo this topic is very important it's very key we always want to drill it into our members because it's it's very valid, you know, and it's easy to slip off. It's a, almost like a slippery slope, right? Once you start getting a hang of it, you slip up a little bit, boom, crash back down. Same when your account, you see that account balance rising, you're on a good track. The little greed starts to kick in, kicks you back down, man. All right, that's all it takes, one bad trade, with excessive greed will put you back in a doghouse, right? You know, you you won't be fly, flying first class and all that. You no know, Lambos. No Lambos. You can eat some top ramen, shrimp <laughs> flavor maybe, if on good days. <laughs> but, but fear and greed, man, fear and greed. So we want to turn tonight into like a conversation about this. Um, we're going to be sharing our experiences and hopefully give you guys some val valuable takeaways with dealing with excessive greed, dealing with excessive fear in trading. You know, we're going to hopefully in this conversation, we're going to help you guys overcome it or acknowledge it at least. Not overcome it in just one um, during this one night topic you know this is going to be a, a continuous work you know and we, we're going to hopefully give you something to work on during 2022 where you'll see by the end of this year if you actually chop chip at it all the all the way through you're gonna see big change you know and that's kind of where we're coming at you know little incremental changes in yourself in the way you think in the way you approach the markets will eventually get you to a bigger, better place. Any words to uh, help the intro read? No, I, I, these, this is just my favorite topic, fear and greed, because I want to say 99.9% .9 of our decision-making, a bad decision-making comes from fear and greed. And that, and with that being said, like, let's get into it, man. Yeah, let's get in, let's get in. So let's so, talk. So what is fear, yeah. yeah. Oh, let's go. Yeah, let's bring it up. The definition of fear. Um, let me pull it up real quick. The definition of fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Or another another definition is be afraid of someone or something as likely as that. So it's called almost the same thing. It's like verb and a noun. So um you know to wrap it up like how can you be fearful of a market when it's it can't physically hurt you it's just numbers right 
<laughs> it's just a bunch of lines, a bunch of candles and charts and whatnot. But it can, it can. Even though it can't physically directly hurt you, um, it can be dangerous. It can be dangerous to your mental. It can be dangerous. It can put you in a state where you're, you can just go sideways and go depressed and blow because you lose all your money. Then you just go down the bad downward spiral, and, and that's where, in the case, people would get fearful, you know, or. Another another thing that comes to mind with fear, feeling fear is maybe people are putting money in the market that they are very just fearful to lose. No one likes losing money, but there's another level where with people, they are they build up this stockpile of money and they become so emotionally invested with it and attached. They're like almost married to it where they cannot let go a single nickel man like they will hurt somebody they see that little thing roll away mm -mm. and so um that could be another part of like just where fear comes in in the markets um and it can stem from a lot of things right but before we dive into that part you know let's talk about the greed the greed you got the definition right yeah greed is basically an excessive desire for more and that could be wealth could be food could be anything but it's it, it's an an excessive desire yes and that's what that's what costs you money that um in one of the books i was reading the mental game of trading it's it, he literally says greed is that effort mentality like ah uh, you know what it's kind of it kind of fits my plan it's probably a 75 percent okay effort you know just do it when we when, when we're not following the plan and we're just saying screw it just place the trade that's immediately a red flag for you and that should you should know that oh wait that's greed popping up and you know that that's what we're going to talk about like that awareness of both fear and greed is how is basically the solution is just bringing it to the surface bringing it to the awareness but they they're so tied in together fear and greed that um i'll go back into fear and fear is sorry here comes to the point where I just had a brain fart. I'm sorry. Just, <laughs> no worries. You take over again. You take over. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There, Reed is about to drop some bombs there, dude. So let's It'll come back. It'll come back. When it comes back, it's I'll, come I'll back. It it's come back. So, like, I think in one of the books we're reading, um, they were talking about how you can bring fear from something totally unrelated to the markets, all right, like a, a life event. You can save. I think there is an example of um, growing up. If you were a kid, roaming around the streets. I think this happened. This happened to me when I was a kid. I was delivering. I had a little paper route, newspaper route, and I was delivering papers to uh, all the houses. And I had some rollerblades, y'all. I was super cool. Um, when I hit this one corner, this one house, I came around the driveway and I was ready to throw. And this one Hugh Genghis dog at, at the time. I was only. You know, it was a little like four feet. Uh, Doberman Shepherd, I think, or was a Rottweiler. I think. One of those, dude. Dude, he came up hot, and it was like the movies, right? His he had his chain on, and he came and like the slack of the chain finally caught him, and he was like up in my face. I felt the oh, drool. I was like, oh. <laughs> so Dramatic. from that day, right, that one moment that two seconds you know i did i ended up throwing the paper i was like i was scared i was my pants were almost wet you know i just tried to like i was trying to like scoot uh skating my way away you know i was shaking dude i was shaking but that kind of shook me up from dogs at the time even though we did have a family dog you know it kind of skewed changed my perspective a little bit because of that one encounter but since we did have a dog and you know i've had to care for the dog and walk him and stuff you know that that bad view or that one one um bad experience you know eventually faded away you know but i know some other people who once they had that bad experience with a dog or a pet they never ever ever 
want to deal with it again. And it's yeah. and I feel sometimes it could eventually build up and just be lingering inside and they take that emotion and when it gets applied to the markets or dealing with finances and whatnot, it can come out, come out to surface without them even knowing, you know. Um, and you can kind of tie this in with, with trading, right? You make one bad decision or if you're gambling in Vegas, you're like, see, I should have done that. You know, how many times people say that? I should have. Yeah. I could have. If I only- could have put more. I shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have put more. So that would be an example of like greed coming in in that moment too, right? A little bit of both, you know, if you were to combine the two. And so going back to um, having those different life moments, everyone has their own moments. I mean, I don't think anyone can truly say they're like completely fearless. I'm sure some, you know, there's a little bit of something that they can be fearful for. And, And that's okay. That's their human nature, right? But I think being able to be a successful trader is learning how to cope with that fear. Not part like not completely ignore it. Know that it's there. But know how to work with it or around it rather than fight it. That's exactly right, man. You yeah. know, um one chapter I I literally read it today. It was talking about how our our fear one thing we fear is pain and in the markets how does that look like it looks like losses right it looks like the shoulda woulda coulda statements and what happens with that it is with i keep going for brain parts man um so with fear it just um what was the last thing i said i'm sorry dude coulda woulda shoulda right they yeah, lead with that yeah so that that fear comes into the market and so he was saying that we may not some people don't have the ability to get rid of fear completely or the pain of of the market losses like a loss may always affect them through their entire trading career but what makes them that new trader to that mature trader and understanding themselves is they know what to do in reaction to that like okay It's painful, but hey, I could move on and I could grow from it. I'm not going to make decisions off of that pain. And then coming back to and that's fear and coming up to greed. Some examples of greed is, you know, you're oversizing your position. You're over trading. You're placing too many trades, putting you in still again back to over risking. Yeah. Um, And then also another like symptom is just blind optimism that it will continue to go upward. And can you name a market, Glenn, where people just have that blind optimism? Yeah. Uh, um, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, right? Oh, crypto. crypto. Freaking crypto. crypto. Like everyone, I mean, we're you and I both say it in our, in our watch list that we're very bullish on the whole crypto space in general and, and Bitcoin in general. But we don't want to be too blind with that. You know, if we I'm sure we have we do we have I'm sure you do and I do. We have our risk manager procedures. If it hits a certain level, we're going to take our funds out, close those positions and then just wait till the market, um, you know, does its thing and gives us a better entry, better criteria, because there's always going to be better entry and better criteria in the future. Mm. That's right. just uh, something to keep in mind is, is like we don't want to be blind to things like it's good to think positive thoughts, but you don't want to have that blindness. You don't want to you want to be uh, I don't even want to say realistic, but like in far as the market terms, you just want to it comes down to following your plan and it comes down to like, you know, I guess that blind optimism, what flows is money, right? People think money like, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire. You know, there's a bunch of millionaire crypto traders or people who made millions off of bitcoin and other coins dogecoin but money's on their mind that's that yes. greed that yes. not the process the process isn't on the, their mind yeah so. yeah and when you're talking about for like us and crypto and the bullish view you what know, came to mind you know, i you know i'm like dude art is the only thing that separates us from the newbie crypto trader is that we're risk managers <laughs> yeah yeah we share similar views right we're like yeah it'll probably go up you know yeah 
But if the if price action coming back to price action, you know, if price action is showing something else, I'm not gonna continue at, to add the, to a position that's that's losing. You know, that's going that's bearish. I'm gonna wait till it gives me a good bullish sign, a bullish yes. signal. Then I'm yeah, I'm gonna get into that market again. And kind of rifting off um, the term you're using, blind optimism. I think as r the great traders or the ones who's been doing it for a while they've learned how to be present with the market Oof, very key right there they learn very how to key. be present they present. learn when when the tides are turning they ain't gonna be standing there on in social media the market's wrong no no i predict this you know they would be like yeah yeah guys jump ship let's go hop on the next one let's go You're right and and they can make decisions like that you know, you remind me of like billionaires, you know, billionaires are, are saying these statements and many people, you know, who aren't well off, they take these billionaires word as gold. Like this is the savior. I need to do what he's doing. But then, you know, just because a person has billions does not mean that they're at that point in time, they're making the right decision. They could have made billions off of a, a trade. And, you know, Michael Burry comes to mind. Yeah. Um, so if you're listening, you don't know Michael Burry. He is a uh, he called the housing crash, basically. Yeah. 2008. Made, uh, yeah, 2008 Seven. called yeah. the housing. Crash. Yeah. And uh, but he was calling it for years in advance, by the way. Um, it finally happened. He made his his bank. Absolute legend. Awesome. Good for him. However, come 2020, 2019, he's saying tesla bear tesla is a bubble tesla is gonna crash it very well maybe you know five years from now could be okay right on but what we're talking about is current price action and just listening to people just because they have a certain belief that that's ego and that's a stem of greed you know that's mm -hmm. greed like i want to be right so <laughs> listen to me tesla's going down i know it i've seen bubbles I called the housing crash. You better listen to me. Almost, almost that vibe, right? And so we just want to just even our word, take our word um, with a grain of salt. You know, do your own research and come to your own conclusion. Mm -hmm. Due diligence, man. Due diligence. Yeah, due, due, due diligence. Yeah. So well, fear, yes, fear is a going back to fear. It's a real thing, and it has shown itself in the markets. And we could pull up a bunch of different different types of markets um that show fear right going back to the 1929 crash then we had a crash in the 80s then we had the internet bubble right and then the the housing crisis 2008 and then we had a like a, a nice drop either in 2011 i believe i don't know what that was then we had the election a little in 2016 that overnight was was wild and then covid 2020 ultimate fear like what happened in the market man what happened bruh bruh the market just went nutsos man you know what let's let's go bring it up let me just share right. share my screen a little bit and let's just talk basically about the market just dumped it dumped in all sectors yes that's what happened so glenn's pulling up um, charts Let's right now. The Dow Jones, right? Pulling up the Dow. Dow Jones. So I'm going to delete the studies real quick. Let's look at the price action. So this is a weekly chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And we are making new highs for a while here. Coming up, everybody was just making tons of money to all the way to the end of 2019. 2020 is like yeah you know what january dude we making it right pull back normal price action and then on you know if i go into a daily chart let me see what day was it the 24th of uh february in 2020 we had a gap down for that opening and then we closed at, made a new low of of three uh, a new low pr of the three months prior and then price just bang dropped yo right this was 
I feel like um, for like ho- us who living in Hawaii, right? We had late news with that, right? <laughs> late news, so we didn't really shut that. We didn't do a full shutdown until like the first or second week of March, and so the market was already tanking. And I was watching this. I think we were on a trip, I believe, and the news didn't break out at the time. We were shaking all people's hands, blah blah blah. And I was watching. And I'm like, whoa. I didn't have any active positions, but you, you know what? You know what? I did. I tried. I tried shorting it back at the end of uh, January, dude, right here. But it whipped me out. I was like, dude, uh, oh, what is first this? Drop. Yeah, the first drop right first here. Drop. I was shorting it at a position, and then I could not withstand the volatility, so I knocked it knocked me out. And I was just watching it after, and then boom, fear. And then I think the news finally broke out, and you know, all this just happened, yo. Within businesses that began March. to close. Yeah, shut down the world, and yeah. that's a, the most recent example of fear right here, with with yep. that. Um, of course, there was a lot of just repercussions. I mean, um, uh things that happened because of like it was like a domino effect right a snowball effect with that you know but the the traders when you're going back to the markets besides the news and everything like if you were to just see this price action you're like just these three bars right here if you focus on them you're like okay something's up you know what i mean as a trader if you're just focusing on price action something is up right yeah. so that makes you question and so that's what fear looks like there's definitely a lot of fear i mean the guys who were on the short side were crushing it who knows they kind of could probably got greedy i don't know but that that was a big big example in the recent times of yeah. fear in the market and news just kept hyping it and like that's that's one of the drivers of fear right is the news so mm-hmm. just another um warning sign is you know don't even if you're a fundamental trader i mean i just glenn and i are technical traders but you could only handle so much news before subliminally subliminally it begins to plant fear into your subconscious oh yeah you know maybe i should sell maybe i should get out maybe i should do this maybe i should you know when you start using that word should or could (laughs) red flag right there oh those, those are another red flags you know just be, like Glenn said, be aware of what's what's happening in the market currently and don't dive into like, oh, next week we're expecting a, a drop. Like, no, we're going off of current price action. We're not going off of what may happen because for all, you know, I mean, one thing that I, that just came to mind right now is earnings, earnings of a company. How many times have we seen positive earnings and the stock drops and then vice versa? We've seen, we've seen, oh, you know, BMW recalls a thousand cars across for blowing up or something. Made up news. It's not accurate. Don't at me on this. But you know, like just news um, articles like that, right? Um, and stocks go up. So like it's just it's almost it, it's to a degree it's unpredictable. The market is not always. Um, we're that's why probabilities. We mentioned in our last topic. We go off of probabilities it's a probabilistic model that we're going off of yeah yeah so i mean that's that's great i mean you were mentioning red flags <laughs> another red flag if is if your relative or friend or family who never talks about stocks the golf course indicator they call it golf they start asking indicator. you about this crypto coin hey you ever heard about this you know you heard about so and so Oh yeah, it's this new thing. My friend showed me. <laughs> That's how it starts. It was a red flag, right? So, um, you know, that could be like the greed part, right? They, they... Absolutely greed. I just wanted to touch on that before we, you went on further. Is that is straight up greed? It's like, bro, I'm up X amount of dollars. Like, jump on this before it's too late. When they begin to say before it's too late, they're trying to um, bring out fear in you. You know, fear of missing out. Oh, that's, FOMO. That's one of the, yeah, FOMO. That's that's a big uh, symptom of trading. You know, our big um, core things that cause a lot of losses. And then the greed. So it's fear and greed playing. So they're trying to 
make sure, okay, if I'm in it, you need to be in it because I don't want to be the only one to lose. You know, I'm fearful that I'm going to be the only one lose. I want to put fear in you. So your fear of missing out if I make money. And guess what? The reason why I'm in it, because my boy Glenn is up $20,000 on this one position. I want to be up $20,000 and I'm just going to keep adding because I want to be like Glenn. And that's where that greed takes over. So, you know, people, the golf course indicator, they're really playing off of fear and greed at the same time without them ma- even realizing it. And, you know, I've been told this, they're like, oh yeah, I only um, trade with money I can lose. So I know that, like, I know I'm following my, my, my rules. Right. But when you're checking it every single day and you have to say <laughs> how much you're up, then I think that's also a red flag that, you know, that should be addressed. And that's many new traders will not acknowledge that. And I think that's a big thing, you know, is traders need to acknowledge, okay, this is fear. Okay, this is greed. But that's what the ego, right? The ego. So it all stems from ego. Those two things come from our ego. And because our ego doesn't want to get hurt, it wants to protect the human body. Like don't place that trade. Don't, um, don't do things or take out your money and be safe you know, that's human nature to be safe. And then it's, that's greed also is just, I want to be in that and I want to make money, you know, money again, money, not the process. Yeah, absolutely. Now going back to what you're mentioning about like signs of when you have fear, let's talk about that. Let's talk about like, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm a trader, yo, I, I'm starting to learn, right? Well, what kind of signs you kind of mentioned always checking the charts, right? Yes. Always Restlessness. Yes. Restlessness. Restlessness. Yeah. What what else we got? You know, I think there's other things like decision fatigue or this. And that um, that falls into restlessness because like, let's say I'm up all night. I'm in a trade now. Um, So perfect example, man. Um, In 2018, you know, I was was spending hours and hours and hours all day. I didn't have an official job. It was my wife and I were, were entrepreneurs. So we're doing our business, but I was spending nights I would stay up all night through the U.S. Open, so like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., just to see if my position was going. But if you guys know, if you're in like a, for example, pound-dollar position, it's not going to move overnight. It's only going to move during market open hours. But I was so attached to either I wanted my position to flip because I was over-risking, so I was being greedy, but then I was fearful of losing that. So it's, two again, two, um, two factors playing on my emotions because I allowed it to, and I would stay up all night. So I was restless. I would continue. I was so tired. I would, but I would look at the phone. I would look at my chart. Should I close it or not? And then, you know, I kind of doze off and then I wake up because I was restless. I was scared. But at the time I, I didn't know that I was just like, you know, I'm just trying to make money. Like I'm just trying to make a living off of trading, you know? And so those two things, just, and then it made me do bad decisions. Exactly what Glenn was saying. You know, it's like that restlessness, I was not in the right mindset to be either closing position or even adding positions, you know, because both end up resulting in more losses for myself just because I mismanaged it overall. And we're risk managers, not tr- first before we are traders. So um, that's just uh, my own lesson, you know, restlessness. I remember one night I was just all up all night watching one position, man. It was just, it was ridiculous. And it, wow. And it didn't move. It did not yeah. move. <laughs> it's just so, flat the whole time. And so like that, but it was a great lesson because I beat myself up for it in the sense that I learned from it. And I'm like, dude, don't ever do that again. Like, look at how sore and tired you are. Like, I didn't have a great day the following day, you know, just, it was just, it was tough. So very vivid is a very vivid memory. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You reminded me when I was starting out in my trading career, I was fearful a lot whenever I would click the button to enter the order. I'd be like, I'd be like, <laughs> my heart, the the heartbeat was going up, and I'm like, oh, oh, and and um, I'd be so afraid to like, if I see my position in profit, I'd be like, oh, I should close it. Should I close it? I should close it. And I didn't know at that point rules trading systems and rules were out the window it was like it was almost like vegas um it was me just like gambling almost i didn't have an idea what i was doing 
and I was just making decisions off emotion and adrenaline and fear and a lot of the times I was almost um, like I was so like fearful being in the markets mm. rather than being out and because when I closed out that trade I was like oh I can breathe again <laughs> I can breathe and I used to be so scared to hold positions overnight because I don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, that's true. You No one knows what the market's going to do. And now I can sleep soundly with multiple positions for for a long time. And, you know, that's just showing the growth and whatnot. Like, I'm yes, I'm fearful, but there's ways to manage your trades and become better as a trader and and it comes with time that comes with putting in work and effort and learning about yourself developing the way you make decisions um, because definitely when you're feel fearful that just takes over and you don't make any you don't make any great decisions like what Rita's saying you're tired lack of sleep I've done that waking up at 3 a.m. trying to trade i'd fall asleep at the trading desk because i didn't get good sleep the prior night you know i'm like this is a bad idea <laughs> i was telling at one point after doing it for a whole month i was like yo this is a bad idea like i should not be sleeping falling asleep while looking at the charts i should not you know <clears throat> uh, yeah I, I just wrote something you know like you you could follow your plan right entry wise and get in it you could even be managing it right but the point where and this should be in your trading plan but you know some this is where that fear and greed take over you could be over risking and then that causes the fear and that's like where glenn you know and me where we're constantly at the beginning looking at the our phone looking at that position we're like oh, yo but i'm following the plan i'm following the plan i just want to look at my position it's like dude yeah you that's great you did the first step you followed your plan awesome amazing now you you gotta let it ride you gotta let the market do its thing win or lose let the market play out because opportunity is always around the corner again in the market opportunity you know so but but the market's not gonna go out my way if i don't watch it <laughs> <laughs> oh man how many like times i'm like okay if it does this i'm gonna do this if this then that you know <laughs> But I'd be like, yeah, that's part of my plan. That's part of my plan, you know? And that's, again, that just comes into ego, you know? Like, I wanted to be right. I was fearful of being wrong. So I wanted to make the market right. I wanted to be right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's like a vicious cycle when you're Absolutely. when you're doing it, when you're going through your trading journey, uh, journey, right? You have the fear of missing out. You have the fear of decision, making the right decision, letting the trade play out. Um, and then you, because of those different decision making, you end up going into some sort of circle and you guys start to learn be like, yo, why am I still doing the same mistakes that I've been doing months ago? Right. And it's not affecting your account in a good way at all. Um, you feel junk. You, your, your confidence is at an all time low. Um, you, you just like, you know what? I quit, yo. I quit. And that's the thing we don't want you to do, right? Like, people maybe at that can reach those points and they eventually come back to the markets, you know. But it takes a lot of just growing and maturing and letting uh, the market do it, what it wants to do, right? So, like, because of that, you're like, okay, now once you start realizing that one line, letting the market do what it's going to do, <laughs> the <mar> <laughs> that right there um, can take you to the next level. Yeah. It's one step to the next level. It's one step sure. in the right direction. It's one There's levels to this. <laughs> yeah. So we got fear. We covered that. We shared some pre uh, personal experience with that. Greed. You, man. That's another thing. Like you, you see that all over social media, especially even with NFTs right now, man. Mm. Like you're gonna see that all across uh, businesses, economy, NFTs, crypto, stocks, um, trading overall. Like we're we're trying to keep this in the trading thing, but you know those two, those two 
emotions or those two topics, fear and greed, that's already built in to our system. Why? Because a human brain is wired over throughout this whole time. It's wired to survive. To avoid harm. Yes. We, we, we look for shelter, food, water, and safety. Right? If you, if you like, just go back to like the pr uh, primal instincts that we have. And knowing that, you know, I think fear and greed does stem from those things. We're just wired that way. That's the way we think. Um, but going back to that, like knowing that's how we wired, like seeing that from that view kind of helps me think about like, okay, yeah, it's, it's natural to feel like that. I shouldn't feel bad for myself. It's just a normal human thing. Okay, how do we fix that? It's pulling yourself out of your own thoughts, parking it here and be like, okay, if I was watching myself, Glenn, if I was watching him from a third person view, like that guy's just, he's making bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he shouldn't be, no, he should, no, that lot size, no, he should tone that down. Half, half that, he'll be okay. <laughs> so greed, yeah, going back to greed, like with, with social media, I feel like the, um, media social media they bring greed to a next level i think almost fear and greed they bring those to a next level because the amount of information out there the amount of people saying this and that oh i made x amount this i made x amount that and people who don't know much about this space or don't know much about investing they're like is this even real Right, they'll question, they're curious. Then they go actually find someone they kinda trust and then just try to learn about it. Then they end up putting in their own money without even proper knowledge or because the fear of the FOMO kicks in. And then they go, you know, whatever. Maybe they make a little bit, maybe they don't. They just crash and burn. And then they go back to like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I hate the market. It's a scam. NFTs, all that's a scam. Maybe NFT is a scam, but the market's a scam. And they, they, they spread that fear amongst all their friends and family, you know, because bad news travels fast. And that's the thing. You know, and then, like, this is, this is society nowadays. This is society. And so when you, it starts becoming a myth. When you tell someone, oh, yeah, I trade in the markets. Oh, that's risky, yeah? Knee jerk. This person doesn't know anything about markets. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's risky. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Going on four year. uncle who lost everything. Yeah, right? <laughs> so and so, they pull out. They pull but out. Yeah, they bought it. Not their hard. experience. Experiences that they've heard from other people who've given up. Yeah, and that experience or that story or whatever is strong enough. It's a good enough reason for that person to not even try. Oof. It's like that big big circle man crazy yeah, i mean we, we sound like we're we're it is a, a circulic though the cyclic you know like, yeah. it sounds like we're repeating ourselves in different ways but in reality that's really what it is it all all this market decisions have come down to these really two basic human traits is that fear and that greed all right yeah yeah so it, we acknowledge it's there how can we fight that read? How do we counteract that? How do we help ourselves from being completely fearful? And is there well, yeah, that, that first thing is, uh, you know, become present, become present. Like, oh, I, th I want more. Oh, wait, hold up. I just, you know, you got to put yourself back out of that position. And then, then the next thing you got to start asking your questions or maybe become present and then say, okay, why did I do that? You know, even maybe the trade closed for a loss and you're like, wait, and looking back, I should have risked less. You know, I over risked on this position. Why did I over risk position or why did I even enter this position? You know, just begin to ask yourself why. And the, the best way to really document that is just through journaling. And like that, that'll solve so many 
issues, so many trading issues, even probably mental and psychological, you realize like, wow, I had this thought about this position that didn't even need to be brought into the market. Mm -hmm. So how would you, how are you, Glenn? Yeah, like being focused, like uh, present, like you said, so focus and leaning in to that. Like when I was talking about my encounter with that dog, um, I was scared, but you know, I had my own dog. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I got to see that dog every day. I had to face him. And it had the same kind of teeth and four legs and what wagging tail, drool all over. But, you know, for me to actually be able to touch the dog, play with the dog, it helped overcome the fear. So when you're in the markets, um, you know, there's there's points where you should step away and just stay away from the markets, right? But when when you're stepping away because you're fearful, that could be another thing, you know? So it's gonna be way harder to come back in. So you gotta learn how to step away because you had a bad loss, consecutive losses. You gotta learn how to take losses well right when you take losses and be fearful that's a bad mix it's gonna just put you're gonna want to push away from the markets when really there's something there that you may be missing where you still have to lean in so lean into the fear in a way yeah 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 absolutely man so what about greed how do you counteract greed? I mean, it, it, it goes the same way, you know, like, let's say just pull an example, you're journaling and you're only supposed to risk one lot, but you see that you risk five lots on this position. That is an immediate red flag. Like, okay, my average risk is only one. And then you see five here, three here. You're like, okay, these two trades are specifically greed like off the bat just because you're hoping for more gains you know so that's one way to really gauge the greed like on on one one scale you know as far as risk goes how much are you risking are you over risking um greed you're always wanting more money so yeah i would like to hear what you have to say (laughs) (laughs) five lots bro to one that is greed um even myself there's a little bit of that still lingering with me during my trades when price is going my way i tend to sometimes add more than more positions than i should have you know and that's me overriding my rules and i'm conscious of it you know but um like that's the thing for me to figure out okay if i'm gonna add another lot all right, I have to tight, tighten my stops to counteract that. Because if I just recklessly add the lot without keeping my total risk in check, then I'm then that's that's full greed, you know. Um, then so, so you're just half greed right now. Half, I'm a half greed. Okay, yeah. all right, one e only. Quarter, greed. Quarter, greed, quarter, greed, quarter. Greed. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like lo- walking that fine line. Right, and I acknowledge that, you know, and so um, that's just me and my personal journey, and and there are times where, where I'm like, oh yeah, I got a good week. It's a good week. I'm like thinking about mm, vacations, yo, nice restaurants, and you eat some a nice good ribeye. <laughs> but <clears throat> that that comes with it, yo, and it happens. It happens. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna apologize for it. I mean, why else were we trading? We're trying to make some some profits, right? And and have a different a better lifestyle. So but to fight that is going back to what Reed was saying with the journey. Um would be the discipline, right? Going back to your journal, your your plan, and patience. Patience of letting the trade run out, letting your uh edge play out right if you're if you follow the rules be like yo i'm risking one percent to make three percent and the trades linger around at two percent you just gotta sit on your hands dude (laughs) maybe 
just let it out. Did you get stopped out? No. Okay. So why should you exit your trade? Oh, because it's not moving. You know, and maybe you're like, okay. Then, then you would say, does your rules tell you to exit a trade early? No. Okay, don't enter, exit the trade. That's a really good point. I was going to bring a caveat. You know, some people only hold it for X amount of hours. So if it is in your plan, as long as you're following your plan, why beat yourself up if whatever happens after you're out of the market? And you're like, oh, I should have done this. Oh, I could have done that. Like, it's all right. Identify it and move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and say you do have a plan. A lot of the times the market does not care about your plan. And if you're... Sometimes your target is 3% and the market's giving you 2.7 before dumping you back out. And so wouldn't it be wise to be like, you know what? Yeah, it's not at three, you know, but I'm seeing this price action. It's starting to tinker, teeter off. And then we got all these other announcements coming or blah, blah, blah. You know, what? yeah, I'm going to just close it out. And that's totally fine. You're going to learn how to do that. And, and that at that point, you're going to sometimes you want to fight the greed, but the times where you are right, where you do take your 2.7 uh, profit and the market just dumps, you're like, whoo, whoo. Yeah. <laughs> Save my butt right there. And I took away my profits. Good trade. Good trade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it goes back to a lot of these small things you can do every day, right? Changing your perspective, being present, being focused with to combat fear, um, having the confidence because nobody knows what's we're trading in an uncertain market. Nobody knows what's going to happen, right? So how do you approach an uncertain market? You have to have these key things locked in in order for you to navigate it correctly. So learn how to counteract the fear. Learn how to counteract the greed through learning through your pro losses, discipline, patience, not over trading. Not, I love that term you were using, the um, uh, blind optimism. Yeah. Yeah. And you gotta let your li winners run, man. That, that, that could be a blind optimism as well you know let your winners run and uh cut your losses short is in in the very fear and greed sense you know let your winners run is like oh i'm down 40 percent, but you know let my gotta let it run like or <laughs> well if you're up 40 percent, sorry wrong way if you're up 40 percent, you're like oh just let my winners run but you know there's appropriate measures to take to keep that profit you just can't let it run forever you know because at one point there's going to be a pullback there's always a pullback in every single market that exists there's always a, even a micro pullback that happens yes. people are always going to take their profits hedge funds will always take their profits yes they're not holding on and forever right so there is a, a truth to that but there also is a caveat and then another mm. one is cut cut your losers fast now this could dip into fear also. It's like, as soon as I'm right, oh, close. Ah, oh, it just reversed against me. I mean, with me and I was right. I was right. I should have not done that. And then you're in another position. Okay, I'm going to enter now. And then you enter and then it goes down red. Oh, shoot. Oh, man, I was, I'm too late again. Exit out on like the two exact same positions. Whereas if you just let, let it play out, you know, it's okay. But obviously if you're, Let's say you you mask your loss at 2% loss. If it's at 2.5 already, you should have closed it at 2%. That's your plan. You know, and that's what that's where that quote is the truth is cut your losses fast. Like as soon as it's already losing to your plan, to your criteria, be done with the plan. Be done with the trade. And that that's that's only caveat for like those two famous quotes that everyone loves to quote, you know. If I'm just gonna let it run. I'm in a crypto position, golf course indicator. I'm just gonna let my let it run. Diamond hands, bro. Diamond, yeah, diamond hands. Diamond hands, right? So I mean <laughs> again, there's some truth and some some greed there at play. It's just the advanced traders know what's going on. Yeah. Absolutely. And then when we as we wind this conversation down, you know, 
um, this is going to be a thing to uh, a theme to work on you know these two topics right here it goes back to trading psychology we build on three pillars over here at HTA trading psychology risk management and strategy psychology getting yourself right and aligned with the right trading ways and the way to think about it way to approach it that's key that's key you can get the blueprint the black book on how every, all the billionaires make their money but if you can't execute them right or if you can execute them right follow it to the T but in those situations where lots of volatility fear in the markets how can you still um, carry those executions out perfectly without feeling tons of fear feeling the greed and whatnot you know because those are the things that can really really take people out you know and you, you'll see it here and there you, you'll see people in the headlines so uh, ex fund manager blows out blah 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 you know investors are mad and you see it big he billion dollar hedge funds they go down because of those little things you know possibly it was a combination but um God, going back to that yeah greed and fear is definitely something to really work on be acknowledged um, learn how to counteract it we can't eliminate it but we can work with it amazing we could this Ooh. could be a probably a whole eight hour session of fear and greed here yeah. but we'll we'll cap it here cap it. love it yeah 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 for those who are watching the replay here guys please uh hit the subscribe button or comment below see which what things stand out to you like message us please feel free to message us ask us like yo can you clarify this part um and we'd love to help you guys out in that way on that note guys thanks for watching we appreciate you